Next, the daredevil who's loving life in lockdown. Do you feel like your life is on pause at the moment with the world in lockdown? It's hard to build relationships or progress in your job. But my next guest knows more than most the time is precious. Life, however challenging right now, is sweet. Vanessa Ruck from South Oxfordshire is on the line. Vanessa, good morning. Good morning. I suppose uh, normally you'd be up some mountain or other on a KTM motorcycle. I would indeed, yeah. <laughs> life is normally full of a lot of off-ride motorcycling and travelling and riding around. So being in a small two-bedroom house for this period of time is quite a life shift, that yeah, is for well, sure. Normally there's absolutely no <laughs> stopping you. You're an adrenaline junkie. You're, a, you know, grab life in all its glory uh, every single day. But actually lockdown has, has stopped you. Kind of get on to that, but certainly... What happened in March 2014 also stopped you in your tracks as well. Just remind us what happened. Yes, it did. I was uh, unfortunately cycling home from work. As you said, my life was was very full of uh, adrenaline and sports. And I got hit by a red light jumping car while cycling. And in that moment, life as I knew it changed since I've been on a sort of six and a half year recovery with six surgeries, including a reconstructed right shoulder and hip. And it was quite a battle, you know, everything that I knew as far as activity in life disappeared in that moment and mm. it gave me a very different appreciation. And somehow there is a little bit of similarity from that kind of accident to suddenly being housebound because life as we know it has changed. It, we're in a very different chapter right now. Yeah, I mean, you're a professional motorcyclist, uh, you know, as, as we alluded to, in fact, when I suggested that uh, ordinarily uh, on a day like today, you might be up a mountain um, yeah. on a KTM. But but uh, it's become very, very quiet for you right now. But actually, as also you said that you're appreciating life has stopped, but you're appreciating your life in a way that perhaps you never did before. It's just given you a completely different perspective. Yeah, it really has. Like previously, everything was go, go, go. It was filling my time, always being busy, running here, running there, doing this. And this lockdown has forced me to stop. And it's actually made me realise that even when the lockdown ends, I think I need a you know, a slightly different life balance. It's great being busy and I love, you know, getting out and riding, but actually being able to sit in the garden with a coffee on a you know summer's morning is actually such a special moment of stillness and reflection where you can just take that breath of wow mm. <laughs> and i never stopped and did things like that before do do you think in some ways and this might seem like a stupid question but your accident Although, I mean, very different circumstances, but your accident and your time of recovery prepared you for, uh, this is an unprecedented time and a time that we didn't foresee happening, mm. of course, but it almost prepared you for for lockdown. You got a different perspective on life when you had your accident, but in some mm. way, this kind of, that helped the period of life now. Yeah, when you've had such major sort of physical implications and you are, you know, you're forced to be very still and quiet a lot of time in bed or on the sofa, you have to find ways to keep your mind and your mental positivity alive and going. And I think when you're in that physical position, it definitely has prepared me for, okay, I can move around my house and I've been trying to find ways to, you know, keep physical and active and fit in my home. But yet yeah, it's still that moment of stillness that I think definitely I I learnt um, how to keep that energy going when when things are different. Mm. This isn't something that most people of, of my generation have, have ever faced. Um yeah, and, and when, when this sort of all became apparent and this is what was going to happen, I guess initially it was devastating for you because actually, you know, you are a professional motorcycle motorcyclist. That's what you do for a living. As I say, you love the adrenaline, you love the speed, you know, like you love that sense of danger. Let's, you know, let's not beat about the bush with this. I mean, that's what you love. And, and, and so when all those events were cancelled initially, you must have been devastated Oh, it was horrific. It felt like the world around was just falling down. Everything, every event, race, booking, trip, 
everything just vanished and it, it vanished quite quickly, but then in sort of a dominoes effect. And that was tough, but we're all in this together and it's not just me that's facing it. I'm not the only one that's losing everything. It's not like just my, my business and my world and my sports are going, you know, everyone is facing these things together and together. If we all really listen and, you know, take this seriously, we're, we're going to come out the other side and it's not just me. And I think that was quite important mm. realization. Yeah. I wasn't being picked on by COVID. It's devastating widespread. And I guess, and I guess that helps, you know, your 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 mental health as well. Because when it was in twenty fourteen, when you had your accident, it, you felt it was just you. You probably felt like the only person in the world that was uh, affected by this, and 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 whose life had had been, you know, affected in a very, mm. a very very difficult and challenging way for you. But I guess, you know, this time is absolutely everybody, the whole world, in fact, has been affected by this. So. In, a, in yeah. a kind of a way that makes it easier. But what have you learnt about yourself during this time that maybe you didn't know before? Oh, gosh, that's a deep question. I like it. Um, what have I learnt about myself? That actually there is so much that you can do and be have fun in a confined space. I remember growing up, my mum always told me off if I said I was bored because bored is a, a lack of imagination to find ways to entertain yourself. And I hate the fact that when you get older, you look back at your parents, they used to tell you and you realise it's so true. But even in a little house, there are ways to you make entertainment and do things. And even on sort of a, a different arm, you know, going off sideways in the conversation. Previously, if I wanted new pillows for the conservatory, I would have probably, you know, popped to a shop and buy some. But in lockdown, you can't just get some new pillows because you want it to be a little bit more comfortable you're at, while you're at home. So I got the sewing machine out and <laughs> made some pillows for a conservatory and, you know, dug in the attic for something to stuff them with and I would never have done that before. But that was me in a situation where it was like, well, right, what shall I do today? Mm. What can I use my imagination to find, you know, something creative, something that's going to make me feel really like smiley inside every time I look at my little pillows. <laughs> and it was it was a great activity that I, th so I think I've learned in myself that I've got my, way more ability to find and make my own happiness yeah. than I realized. Yeah. That's really interesting, isn't it? That actually you don't have to be chasing, you know, that, that adrenaline all the time and going up mountains and, and doing things that, you know, most people would, would never, ever dream of doing mm. because of your addiction to adrenaline. But actually it's the simple things that can and do make you happy. And it sort of recenters yeah. you, doesn't it? It refocuses you. Yeah, very true. I definitely miss it. I'm not going to pretend that I don't miss riding. Um, but that is not what we should be doing right now so I'm you know my bike's in the garage it's also given me time to do some more maintenance on my bike and um, work on work in the garage um, and you know learning about the bike and spending more time on it will help me when I get back out and ride on it as well mm. so there's can lots I, of different perspectives uh, can I just uh, mention as well the appreciation that we have for that little bird that's tweeting in the background around you oh can you hear them yeah, <laughs> I'm watching them flying around outside the window. There are so many more birds in our garden now. And I actually, um, when we did a Tesco shop, we've actually managed to only go to the shop three times now since lockdown. And uh, I decided to treat the little birds to a bird feeder in Tesco's. And it's taken three locations in the garden to find where they're brave enough to go to. <laughs> but you see, you wouldn't have done that. You would not no. have done that. So the birds, of course, have lockdown to thank uh, for you finding <laughs> the perfect place, the perfect spot in the garden for that. And I bet you're appreciating their bird song as well, like we all are right now. Uh, Vanessa, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much. I wish you all the best. Uh, take care, keep safe. And of course, uh, you'll be out on that bike up that mountain, I'm sure, before long. But thank you very much indeed for being on the show this morning. And uh, to hear more from Vanessa, you can visit her website, which is thegirlonabike.com. Mm -hmm.